Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have a real short one here for you because there's something I've been working on and I've been meaning to get it out into the world, but it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and I want to do a complete job on it. I want to make sure I'm being comprehensive and I'm uh, diving into all the different aspects of it. So I, I really wanted to have this video that I've been working on out already and I just haven't finished it yet because there's just a lot of things I want to make sure I mention and make sure that I address and I want to make sure that I'm doing it in a careful way. I am talking about Winston Ewart's dependency graph model as an alternative to common ancestry to explain uh, phylogenetic relationships, nested hierarchical patterns of similarity among living things. So this goes back to a 2018 paper published in uh, Discovery Institute's fake journal Biocomplexity, and then there was a more recent follow-up one as well. And in this video, uh, this is the short version. I'm not going to give you the full thing. That's going to be a longer video that's coming up, I promise. Uh, it's almost ready, but I, I just want to make sure I'm being comprehensive about it. But in this short one, I want to get an explanation out there because you see a lot of creationists bringing this up and I want to give people something they can say in response. So here's the short version of the answer to the creationist claim that Winston Ewart's dependency graph model does a better job explaining the observed pattern of similarity than evolutionary or phylogenetic relationships. And the answer is this. Phylogenetics is based on doing sequence comparisons. You're building your nested hierarchical pattern of similarity based on the nucleotide sequences, right? You're comparing nucleotide sequences across lots of different clades, and you're finding that the pattern of similarity is a nested hierarchy. This is true for functional, highly constrained sequences. It's true for unconstrained sequences, which will mostly be non-functional. The point is you're doing DNA sequence alignments and comparing those sequences, right? The actual nucleotide sequences of the genome. Winston Ewart does not do this in his work on dependency graphs. He initially looks at this in terms of the presence or absence of gene families, and then more recently looks at it in terms of amino acid sequences. At no point is he doing the kinds of comparisons that are done when you're doing phylogenetics. Creationists claim the dependency graph model does a better job explaining the observed pattern of similarities than evolutionary processes and nested hierarchical relationships going back in time through common ancestry. The problem here is that they're not addressing the same data. There is actually no engagement with the data that we're leaning on to infer common ancestry, right? Again, the data that we use to determine phylogenetic relationships and infer common ancestry is sequence comparisons. There have to date, as of 2025, been no engagement with the actual DNA sequences with regard to the dependency graph model. It has been applied to gene families and amino acid sequences, which are not used to do the phylogenetics that we're talking about. So when creationists say, this actually does a better job explaining these relationships, you can say, no, it doesn't. It's addressing a completely different data set. There are other problems. There are more technical reasons and other unanswered questions related to it that also make it not a good explanation for the observations. But the biggest red flag, the thing you can always respond when a creationist brings up dependency graphs, is that these are actually not used to try to address phylogenetic data, right? They're not even using the same data set. That's the short answer to the creationists claim that dependency graphs do a better job explaining the pattern we see than common ancestry. You can't make the claim that it's a better explanation for the data if you're not working with the same data. Thank you for watching. I promise you I'm going to have the full length video on this at some point. I'm going to go through a lot of details in terms of some other issues with this dependency graph model. And I'll have the longer version of that at some point in the hopefully near future. So that's that. Thank you for watching. Please remember to hit the buttons, uh, like, share, comment. Uh, and when you hear about dependency graphs from creationists, now you have the answer. Don't get fooled.